This is the moment I think we've been waiting for in the evening. But um, despite my big shoulders, it's a moment that might just be a bit too heavy even for me to carry. So I've looked around the room and found shoulders that are much more broader than mine. I would like to ask Sheikh Mohammed Adam Lamadi, who is a close friend and uh, somebody who lives not far from here in the north of London, to try and take the task of introducing Habib uh, Omar bin Hafiz, Sheikh Mohammed. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'll start with a, a non introduction before I give the introduction. Fuad has this uh, way of pouncing upon you with a surprise, and this is mine. I came here as a gate crasher. Far was it from my mind that it would fall upon me to introduce Al Habib Umar bin Hamid bin Salim Al Habib. Uh, I'm now suffering from the equivalent of what I read recently in the newspapers about progressive dwindling of the bones that visits the aged. And I am old. <laughs> <laughs> the progressive dwindling results from the fact that I have to introduce Al Habib Omar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz which I find a tremendously difficult act. If the footsteps that I must follow are those of Peter Adams with all the exuberance <laughs> and the eloquence that goes with it, body language and speech, and then Abdul Hakim, Murad. What do I say? I say this. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan yuwafi ni'amahu wa yukafi wa masida. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in tibbi al-kulubi wa dawaiha. Wa afiyat al-abdani wa shifaiha. Wa nuri al-absari wa diyaiha. Wa ala alihi wa sahabi wa sallam. Sixty years ago, I and my friend here, Muhammad Abu Bakr Bay Shwaib, had the luck to see one of those phenomenal figures in the history of Islam in action. Islam in action. The Prophet, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi, indeed, not just gestures, deed, the spirit and the soul of Islam walking on two legs. The man was Umar bin Ahmad bin Abu Bakr bin Abdullah bin, bin Ham bin Mizain bin Alam bin Smith until it goes back to the Prophet, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. I and another friend on another occasion went to visit this man who was majesty itself. The blood of princes ran cold when they met him out of fear and awe. And do you know what he did? He took out a stove. Those were the days of the stove. So I, I belong to the stove age. And he took out a stove made some tea, took out a set of uh, cups and saucers, and served it to us. We couldn't believe it. But it, it derived from, from the words of the prophet that uh, he does not believe. He does not believe who does not honor the guest. The act survived years of my life. From 60 years ago, with the experience of this man, I have him in my sight as I have to introduce Al Habib Umar bin Muhammad bin Salman Hafiz as uh, somebody, I think it was an Abu, Abu, Abu Hassan Ishadil who, say, who said, Al Itibao Antar al Matbu'a fi kulli shay, wa ma'a kulli shay, wa ba'da kulli shay. The following, the adherence to the Prophet ﷺ is to see him in everything, before everything, after everything. To me, I know this will embarrass Al-Habib, 
because I know him a bit. But I'll publish, and I'm quite happy to be damned. <laughs> and what I publish is that here you have a child brought up unto adulthood with the exemplar of the Prophet at every step in his life with every breath that comes and every breath that goes. This is Al Habib Umar bin Ahmed Salim al Hafiz, in my humble view. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad in Tibbi al Kulub wa Dawaiha, wa Afiat al Abdani wa Shifaiha, wa Nur al Absari wa Diaiha, wa ala Alihi wa Sahabi wa Sallim, wa ala Al Habib Umar bin Muhammad bin Salim al Hafiz. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسين وآلهم وأصحابهم وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Name of Allah the Compassionate the Merciful and may His blessings and peace rest upon His noble Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and upon all of His prophets and messengers from now until the Day of Judgment. أما بعد فإن مما وصل إلينا من آثار بلاغ هذا النبي عن الله تبارك وتعالى أن الأصل والحكمة والمراد الأحب لله تبارك وتعالى في خلق هذا الخلق هو التعارف والتعاون على ما ينفع. One of the things that has come down to us most clearly from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in all of the branches of Islam is that one of the fundamental principles is mutual knowledge and mutual understanding for the sake of uh, mutual benefit. وبلغنا في خبره الصدق أن أنبياء الله جميعا بعثوا بهذا المعنى. And he has said truly that all of the prophets have been sent with the same message. وقص علينا من أخبارهم كثيرة. And uh, the stories concerning this uh, are too numerous to be uh, mentioned. حتى رسخ يقينا في أذهاننا أنه لا يمكن أن تكون ثقافة ولا دين ولا معرفة صحيحة تبعث على البغضاء والشحناء. So that as for this reason it's become an absolute certainty in our minds that there can be no civilization and no culture which is based on principles of hatred and mutual mistrust. وأن ما نتحدث عنه من الاختلاف الذي يكون رحمة هو معناه التنوع في الفهم والرأي والتنوع أيضا والتعدد في أجناس الخلق كما سمعتم في الكلام السابق. And uh, one of the evidences of this, and the consequences of this, is that amongst Allah's signs are the differences not just of how people look, but the differences that exist between their ways of understanding things. But anybody who harbors in himself hatred for another person in himself then that person has denied the basic principle of mercy. And I think that this is something accepted and acknowledged by every intelligent person in the world. And any culture whose uh, foundation is that it's legitimate to uh, despise and to condemn other people is a culture which is built on a completely false principle. And الرحمة لهم واستصلاحهم ومن وراءهم بمقابلتهم بمثل ذلك. And the reason why some of God's prophets took up arms was simply in order to spread this principle of 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 mercy and to obstruct the ways of those who would prevent mercy from reaching mankind. ومع ذلك ضبطت له بوابط وجعلت له الأسس. 
and uh, unshakable principles and foundations were established for that. وفي أثنائه ظهرت مظاهر الرحمة. And through these principles, the signs of mercy were uh, made evident. على ذلك مضى الأنبياء حتى جاء خاتمهم وسيدهم وأخذ يقول لكل من يغزو على هذا المنوال وبتل ذلك الميزان لا تغدر ولا تمثل لا تقتل مدبرا ولا تذفف جريحا ولا تقتل امرأة ولا صبية. And uh, this reached the way of the, the final prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who used to command anybody who is engaging in combat never to uh, mutilate anybody, never to kill anybody unjustly and never to target a woman or a child. And the same principle was emphasized by his righteous successors. ستجدون أقواما اعتزلوا القتال وهم في الصوامع وفي الكنائس فلا تقربوا أحدا منهم. So Abu Bakr said you shall come across a people who uh, move away from the world and go into retreats in monasteries and uh, cells so do not disturb them. وحيث عرفت هذه الحقيقة فنحتاج أن نقف عند نقاط. And since this principle seems to be established we still need to uh, respect and be aware of certain points. الأولى the first ان العدل والرحمه واراده نشر الاخاء بين الناس يكثر مدعوها من مختلف الطوائف وتطبيقها وتحقيقها في الواقع يقل uh, and unfortunately although there are very many people who call for mercy and forgiveness and for brotherhood between human beings the ones who actually achieve that are fairly uh, few in number فلسنا في شديد الحاجة إلى بيان أن أصول الديانات خصوصا التي لها اتصال بالسماء تقوم على الرحمة واحترام الجار وأداء حق الغير. We don't need much evidence before we believe that all of the religions uh, recognize the principle of mercy and hospitality and kindness to neighbors. كذلك لسنا محتاجين من أرباب السياسة وأهل الطوائف المختلفة أو المبادئ والاتجاهات أن يقولوا لنا أن نحن نقوم على ذلك. Similarly, we don't need to hear uh, politicians and leaders of religious and other communities saying again and again that this is their basic principle. لكننا نحتاج إلى أن نعرف الواجب ثم نتعامل مع من يخل بهذه القواعد بما ينبغي. Instead, it's more useful for us to know what our duty is and then to act practically with those who are not uh, upholding these values. أما أن يرمى تصرف الأفراد من أي فئة على الفئة كلها أو على المبدأ كله فهذا أيضا غير مقبول. Uh, because there are some people who uh, depart from these practices and not to uh, interrupt those who are departing from these practices is also something unacceptable. And those who also... Uh, seek to play with these issues and these sensitivities, whether it be through mass media or in other contexts, their behavior also is unacceptable. What we urgently need is uh, an inward spiritual orientation or disposition that allows us to put these theories into actual practice. للتعدي على الآخرين بأي وجه من الوجوه كان هذا التعدي إلا الجهل والهوى. In reality, if we look at the real motivations for aggression and 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 conflict, we find that the real reasons are ignorance and selfishness. وإذا كان ما سمعنا عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في القوم الذين قاتلوه ثم كان تعامله معهم بذاك التعامل فكيف بمن عشت معهم أو جاورتهم أو جلست في بلدهم إذا كان تعامل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بتلك السماحة والرحمة وكما بدأ يذهبوا فأنتم الطلقة مع من قاتلوه وآذوه وحاربوا دينه بأنواع المحاربة 
فكيف يكون تعاملك مع من تعيش في بلادهم أو تجاورهم أو تكون عندهم If the Holy Prophet was able simply to forgive those who had uh, attacked him and his people and tortured them and driven them out, then uh, uh, how much more forgiving should we be uh, with people who have allowed us into their homes and whose neighbors we now are? وإذا كان من المسلم بأن في مثل دعوة سيدنا عيسى بن مريم على نبينا وعلي أفضل صلى الله وسلم مسألة السلام واحترام حق الجار فما هناك معنى لأن يقوم منسوب إلى الديانة في شيء من مراقيها العالية فيدعى بقس مثلا ثم يتعمد إحراق كتاب الله تعالى so we know on the basis of this as a universal principle amongst the religions that when somebody who claims to be a representative of a Christian church uh, comes up and burns Allah's book, we know what is his true relationship to his religion. So what we need is to follow a position based on knowledge and to... Uh, oppose anything that's based on ignorance and uh, egotism. He obviously didn't know that the book which he burnt contained many respectful references to the Prophet Jesus. And that uh, Maryam was mentioned many times in, in, in the same book which doesn't mention any of the, the, the names of the wives or the daughters of the Holy Prophet himself. نقضي بأمر فاصل فيها بلا تطويل حديث عنها ومؤتمرات وجلسات والشرر يزداد ويشتعل. So what we need uh, is to spread this principle of knowledge and to work out why it is that the knowledge isn't adequate uh, without having to repeat the experience of many long seminars and and, and conferences. وكلما وع المسلمون حقائق سيرة نبيهم كانوا أحسن ترجمة لمعاني ما جاء به. And uh, the best uh, interpretation and manifestation of the life of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is for the Muslims themselves to put it into practice in their own lives. لقد أظهر السب والشتم والوجعة في الدين جماعة من اليهود بعد وجعة أحد. After the Battle of Uhud, a group of the, the Jews started to abuse and to curse the Holy Prophet. And similarly, uh, a group of the Munafiqun uh, spoke with them along the same lines. And they said, if Muhammad's teaching was true, this defeat wouldn't have taken place. حتى استأذن جماعة من الصحابة في أن يتصرفوا مع من تفوه السنتهم من بعض اليهود وبعض المنافقين حتى جاءت الغيرة عند جماعة من الصحابة أن يتصرفوا بالإسكات بالقوة من يتكلم من اليهود ومن المنافقين uh, so to the extent that a group of the Holy Prophet's companions were tempted to use the same kind of language and the same kind of behavior with those people who had abused the Holy Prophet. Uh, and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, spoken to. Uh, but he said, no, don't do that. As for those people, I have a treaty with them. But they said, but they uh, insult you and they insult your religion. Uh, this doesn't mean that I have the right to break my treaty with them. And they said, but what about the munafiqeen? He said, they still say, la ilaha illallah. And they said, but they're talking about you behind your back in this way. But he said, Allah has forgiven me, for, forbidden me to take any step against anyone who says, La ilaha illallah. 
وبما في قلوب المنافقين من الشرك بالله والتكذيب له كان أعرف بذلك من الصحابة لكنه وقف عند ذلك المنهج الذي أحبه الله وأراده صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يكون لأمته Even though the Holy Prophet وسلم, knew better what was in the hearts of those Jews and those uh, hypocrites, still uh, he uh, followed the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down upon his, his messenger. So, may Allah prepare our hearts to uh, follow suit. And help us to uh, behave in the way that he loves. ولئن حدثنا عن الحبيب عمر بن سميط بعاطفة من الإيمان ربطته بالقيم أشهى محمد آدم وخدمته للضيف لأن النبي وصى بالضيف And uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Adam has reminded us in his uh, mentioning of uh, Sheikh uh, Ibn Sumayt the enormous importance as stressed by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of honoring the guest فأقول وأنا أيضا في ذا الموقف لا أعدم وصية من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بكم معشر الحاضرين من مسلمين وغير مسلمين إذ وصانا بالجليس ووصانا بأهل اللقاء والاجتماع ووصانا بمن نجلس معهم لو ساعة من نهار فلو تمكنت الخدمة لكم لكان ذلك من وصية رسول الله and uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, urged us so much to be kind and forgiving towards those who sit with us even for one hour and we must never be violating uh, the, the, the principles, uh, the, the teachings of the Holy Prophet وسلم. May Allah water our hearts with uh, the education and the training that comes with the and may Allah send this, uh, this healing upon the people of this city and upon the whole world. And success is only from Allah.